Welcome everyone to this session on how eye tracking enables value in the businesses for developers and practitioners in XR. My name is Johan Bogen. I am the director of XR ecosystem software here at Toby. And I'm going to talk to you today about how eye tracking has been applied and utilized in successful businesses over the decades. I also want to talk to you how I see this transfer into the area of XR and have a little bit of a sneak peek into the future XR devices and what we can expect from those going forward. Eye tracking is providing proving foundational in XR at the moment. It is a core component in some of the best possible HMDs going forward. My colleague Doug Eggert just spoke about how you can expect this to roll out in XR HMDs going forward because device manufacturers are including eye tracking as a standard in their devices. And eye tracking is also becoming part of the ongoing standardization work in the industry led by, for example, Kronos Group with the Open XR standards. So in the simplest of terms, eye tracking is here. For those of you who don't know Toby, we have been around for about 20 years focusing on eye tracking and its applications. Our vision has always been that eye tracking will become an integral part of all man-machine interfaces simply because it gives such a broad channel of communication uh, with utilizing eye gaze, both in terms of controlling our machines and in helping our machines understand us better. I've been part of the company almost from the start and I took the liberty here today to do a little bit of research back and see how eye tracking has been applied and how I see that moving into the XR space in these days when eye tracking is coming into the headsets. Eye tracking per se has been around for quite a long time. It's probably close to 100 years since the first manual eye tracker started, simply a picture with a hole in the middle and a physician observing a patient through that hole to see where the eyes moved. Then over time, these have become automated machines. First, very expensive at once for research and the like. But as time has gone on, and especially in the last two decades, eye tracking has made it into more and more affordable devices. And today, you'll find eye trackers integrated in consumer devices such as monitors, smartphones, laptops, and of course, VR HMDs. Toby is today the world leader in providing eye tracking technologies for the industries. We are the ones that provide eye tracking into Alienware laptops. We provide it to HTC's Vive Pro i, and we're also super excited about the latest addition in consumer devices, which is the Pico Neo 2 i. Also, eye tracking from Toby is integrated into future devices and in reference designs by Qualcomm that target those future devices, which is a really, really strong position, I think, to have going forward. These devices that you see here and the ones coming out, they include eye tracking because it brings value to developers and it brings value to practitioners. With eye tracking, you can create more immersive experiences and bring actionable insights into the fields of different types of analytics, diagnostics, and therapeutic applications. So eye tracking really is an integral part of the XR hardware. And it is also because it simply makes the device better. Eye tracking has a core role to play when a device manufacturer balances the very needs for cost, power consumption, and processing power. One of the core ways eye tracking is used, like, utilized here is uh, by driving foveated rendering. Uh, so the ability to focus graphics resources exactly on the small, small point where the eye is actually directing. This helps with battery time and GPU power, heat consumption, and those associated 
uh, areas and it does all this while enabling and maintaining the modern high level graphical user experiences that we're all getting used to. And last but not least, as 5G enters the XR scene, having eye tracking is needed to run foveated video transport over the networks and really leverage the full capabilities of the edge. But today I want to talk mainly about the applications of eye tracking and I want to focus on what eye tracking brings to the community of developers and practitioners in XR. And since eye tracking actually has become a feature that we can see in headsets, that's sort of undisputed. I thought it would be interesting to look back at the areas where eye tracking has been used pre previously outside XR and see how we can extrapolate that into the technology shift that we see happening in HMDs today. So if I look back at the areas where Toby has been active and where eye tracking has been adopted over the last decades, gaming is probably the first one that comes to mind. Uh, Toby eye tracking is supported in over 150 games today. Most of these come from the PC space where eye tracking has been adopted since quite a few years. But already now, even with the very few devices that we have had available lately, there are some uh, VR titles coming out, which is super excited. And I know there's a bunch of colleagues of mine who eagerly got their hands on the new mods for the F4 and Half-Life Alex that were released by Valve yeah, not too far ago. So I'm really looking forward to see how that will develop as well. Secondly, but in some sense, most importantly, in very many ways, are the 60,000 voices eye tracking from Toby has provided to people with various severe disabilities through, around the world. This area of application with eye tracking in communication devices and assistive technology, this is really a place that have led, have led us to push the boundaries for using eye tracking as an input modality. We have done this very much in collaboration with other partners in the industry, and I'm very proud about the changes that Microsoft did last year, where they actually added eye, uh, eye tracking and gaze control as a core input modality into the Windows stack. I find that being a huge testament for, for the power of this as a input device. And as many of you know, what goes into the OSs as a, a assistive technology quite often hits it broadly for all of us um, in due time. There is also a very profitable feel that we've seen through the years of using eye tracking in training and in assessments and actually in any application that looks at measuring human behavior of some sort. This particular example that you see here is from the real world, where eye tracking is used to train and find experts in a casting plant. Finally, it's um, impossible not to mention the recent explosion in remote collaboration applications. I'm sure that you have also seen a couple of interesting examples of new types of remote collaboration, both screen-based and in VR. And VR really does a good job of mimicking the real interactions in many ways. And live eye movements for Avatar has an amazing way of propelling the experience out of the uncanny valley. I really would have wanted to dive into all of these areas with you here today, but in the interest of time, I decided to focus on two of them that I find especially interesting here, given where we are in 2020 in general and where the XR industry is right now. Firstly, I want to look at the new ways of meeting remotely. Eye tracking is being adopted in remote collaboration in as a way to create not only photorealist but also video realistic avatars that feel like a real person. Secondly, I want to take a dive into existing enterprise markets that utilize eye tracking already today 
outside VR, the markets of training and design evaluation especially, and have a look at how we can expect those to continue to grow in uh, VR and as eye tracking now comes out in headsets, how I think that these uh, applications will adopt the technology as well. But before I jump into the business applications, I would want to take a minute to do a little bit of promotion for Toby's XR DevZone and some of the showcases and starting points that I know have proven very, very valuable for any developers out there that want to dive into the new capabilities of upcoming headsets. On the Toby Dev Zone, you'll find a comprehensive XR SDK that has proven very, very quick uh, starting way for developers trying to apply eye tracking in various situations in XR. At Toby, we're th absolutely thrilled that the industry is picking this up, that developers out there are starting to experiment and integrate this into their experiences. And we thought uh, we really should uh, do our part here as well and share the experience that we have uh, gotten and accumulated over the years by dog fooding our own technology. So what you'll find in these SDKs is really valuable tools, uh, samples, showcases to get you kickstarted. And I highly encourage any developer out there who has a Vi Pro I or the new Pico Neo 2i to check these SDKs out. But first, in terms of enterprise applications, let's dive into remote collaboration. I would expect that there are many of you that just like me have spent more attention to this previous than you have previously. The VR scene has definitely seen its fair share of new collaboration applications, and some of the existing one has reignited. The Steam stats are quite impressive for VR chat and all space VR, and a couple of those applications, if you look at the first few months of this year. One particular application that we have worked with in my team is Vive Sync from the Vive team. I have. Uh, really enjoyed the experience of seeing eye tracking applied in real in real avatars uh, for the first time and seeing what a great addition that is to the experience. Uh, I know I'm not the only one who have been very impressed with what the Vive team has done. And I actually had the chance to speak with David, who's leading the Vive team, uh, about their experience the other day. Uh, I even managed to catch him on camera inside Vive Sync, so I will let David speak for this himself. Here he is. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Vive Sync. My name is David Sapienza, and I run content production here at Vive. And you know, we get asked all the time about eye tracking. You know, how is it used? What are the best use cases? And, you know, I would say initially, most people only think of eye tracking from their point of view. How would they, say, navigate a user interface with just their eye? Or how would they track whether they're looking at one thing versus another thing? But it's much more than that. You know, in Sync, we actually apply it to our avatars. And, in, and the whole purpose of Sync was actually to bring teams together. So capturing a user's likeness, their face was super important to us. In fact, we even built a full body IK system so we can communicate through body language. But once we enabled eye tracking, that's when we were able to not only communicate through body language, but also through our eyes. You know, when we're having design meetings and one of my designers or artists, are, their eyes are darting left or darting right or up and down around an object or or I say something and someone just rolls their eyes. You know, they're able to communicate to me without even saying a word. And in fact, I could even speak to the whole studio and I get a read of the room based on just the way the eyes are moving, if they're looking up and thawed. So without question, I would say eye tracking has really enhanced the sync avatars and made our whole experience and made communicating in VR much better. So I hope you guys give it a try and check it out for yourselves. With that, 
I'll see you guys later. Big thanks to David uh, at VibeSync. If you look back at how avatar animation has been done in VR, you realize that the eye movement is actually a quite known problem that a lot of developers have experienced and handled in various ways. You can, first of all, show no eyes. That's what the Oculus team did in the very first avatars they had. Uh, they did a very, very solid job on what is a good avatar. And one of the conclusions was that you have to cover their eyes because otherwise they look really, really strange. That is true if you start having really humanoid avatars. You can avoid that in the way that Steam did in their avatars as well. You make cartoony avatars with big bulging eyes that are fixed straight forward, but they still look very friendly and happy. Uh, as long as you do the cartoony part right. A couple of years later, Facebook and Oculus started doing more realistic avatars, still somewhat cartoony-like, but they added emulated eye movements into the mix. You can see on the one down here that the eye movements look reasonably good a, many, a large part of the time, but every once in a while you get a very weird feeling about a glass that goes completely the wrong direction. So that's really why the VibeSync avatars become so realistic. The, ch the change that gives, if you compare to the old ones, is absolutely amazing. And like David said, I highly recommend all of you to try out VibeSync um, if you have a chance. Referring back to our SDK um, on the Toby Dev Zone, here is one of the samples you'll find in that package. Here we've hooked up the blend shapes to the eye movements and drive both eye direction and some basic face movements with the eye tracking. And it looks pretty darn good just in that uh, short clip as well. You can also, of course, in various interactions, turn the eye tracking around. In this clip here, you'll see how we drive a couple of non-player characters based on the eye gaze of the user. So the blue circle you see here is where the user is looking and you're viewing the scene out of the user's perspective. And uh, first of all, notice how the paranoid robot to the left is very attentive to gaze, the chilled one in the middle seems to know what's happening, but wants to show, hide their interest. But have a look at the awkward one on the right. This is one of my favorite, actually, because he's looking at you all the time, except when we are looking at it. But again, the real magic in my mind happens when we gaze into the eyes of another person. I think the emotional response we get from that is something that we're so used to in our everyday interactions that we seem to take it for granted. But when you see it in VR, or rather when you see the absence of it in VR, then you really understand how fundamental eye contact is. So needless to say, one of the more powerful experiences we have on our dev zone as well is this short avatar scene. Just get in there, take a mirror and look at yourselves without eye tracking and with eye tracking. The difference is quite astonishing, actually. Moving on to the next application area of eye tracking, I want to talk a little bit about various enterprise applications and how eye tracking has been used historically, both outside VR and now lately inside. VR. First of all, I want to mention our partner Bobling, um, who is also speaking here uh, at an, in another session. You, um, they're part of the Bobler group, and they work with serving large enterprises in creating custom digitized training programs for their employees. This here is an example of a safety inspection training for a large Scandinavian train operator. In this case, eye tracking brought the client, this particular client, a much higher level of security in what 
the training participants actually observe during the training and that they don't just skip through it and attend. A second type of example that is very common is the area of immersive product design. Eye tracking has brought an objective tool to focus groups and collaboration about product design and product packaging design for a very, very long time. We even have our own group at Toby that over the years have provided services to clients like this in the automotive industry to show, help them show really how their audience is perceiving their products. And it's actually come so far that that is a whole business unit in itself for Toby. And a lot of the major brand owners in the world have eye tracking as a core tool in their toolbox when they go out and develop new products, new designs, test them all over the world with their teams and their focus groups. And then later when they roll it out live. And now with eye tracking being more accessible to these large companies, uh, a lot of workflows are digitized and more and more of these focus groups happen in VR, especially in times like this, then I expect that we can see eye tracking being picked up very, very natural as a key piece in these uh, type of applications. Finally, I also want to mention some of the businesses that we've seen out there using eye tracking in explicit training. This particular case that I showed you earlier is from a live uh, session where eye tracking is actually worn in the live case. This is from a casting plant where um, they have identified expert casters um, based on partially on their eye movements and how they focus their attention during their task. Then they identify novices who have a different type of gaze pattern and different results in the factory. And then they can combine those two together and use the experts and the visual attention of the experts as a way of teaching novices how to perform the tasks in a more efficient way and in a safer manner than previously. This is the what um, Jacob Hamel from H&H &H Castings said about the experiences. And this goes a long way for the value of using these kind of technologies. And this is something that we quite often see moving into XR as well, having large, expensive and potentially dangerous um, environments being reproduced in VR and used in teaching. So this is an area where I know that we have a lot of interest for eye tracking and I see the combination of eye tracking moving into XR and a proven um, footprint in that market being very, very interesting to see how that takes off over the next um, quarters and years. And again, going back to the developers and pr practitioners out there, there is a lot of inspiration. There is a lot of know-how in these areas and we have tried to accumulate what we have at Toby and share it as openly as possible. This talk today is part of that and we also have a lot of material on our dev zone and our business unit for analytics and behavioral, uh, behavioral studies. Toby Pro has a lot of know-how about how eye tracking is applied in those kind of areas as well. Here is a little resource list with some of the texts uh, or some of the material that I shared during this presentation. Grab a screenshot um, or uh, ping out in the chat afterwards. And with that, I want to thank you very much for joining me here today and looking forward to seeing you all soon in real life or in VR out there. Hey, hey Joshua. Uh, thank, hey, Johan, thank you so much for that, uh, that really interesting talk. Um, uh, again, uh, welcome everyone to uh, day four of uh, AWE Online. Uh, I'm here with Johan from Toby Technologies, and um, he just gave a really inspiring talk on 
um, on foveated tracking um, and some other really interesting eye tracking concepts. Um, so that was a obviously a, 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 a pre-recorded session, um, uh, and, and now that you, uh, you you saw that, and um, I'm I'm curious, like based on the, some of the stuff you were seeing in the chat, like um, how do you really see this this type of technology evolving? Well, eye tracking has been around for so long. So I think VR in, is in one sense just a natural extension. It's bringing all this experience from all these types of applications into the VR space. And there is such a great intersection between how VR is uh, developing in enterprise applications and how eye tracking has been used throughout the decades. So I'm really excited about the next couple of years. Yeah. All right. Um, we had one specific question in the chat. Uh, I was asking about if you're working with any vendors to implement foveated tracking, um, could this also be used to do things in AR like contextual image targeting uh, to implement callouts on a physical object? Yep. So Toby is by far the leader, the leading provider of eye tracking. So I think it's fair to say that we work in one way or the other with most hardware vendors who have devices in the market or are, or are looking at them. Um, so the short answer is yes, you can expect that. I can obviously not go into future products coming out, but we have uh, offerings and solutions for bringing, AR, uh, bringing eye tracking into both VR and into AR solutions. So keep your eyes open over the next months and quarters. Yeah, yeah. Um, there was another one in there uh, that was asking about more like the logistics of how this might be implemented on the, on the head. Um, so how does the Toby eye tracker system deal with prescription eyeglasses? And if you asking if you've done any measurements on how uh, eyeglasses might spoil the accuracy of eye tracking algorithms, um, being that this is yeah. such precise technology, it's, 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 a, it's a question of whether or not um, other stuff that uh, helps people to, to see might actually impact the accuracy or the fidelity of this type of technology. Yeah, that's a very good point, actually, uh, Joshua. This is one of the areas where it is a challenge. And I think this is where we have the biggest advantage, just having been around for two decades, dealing with these kind of um, corner cases and issues uh, with the whole population. So Toby has an extremely good coverage over the whole population, glasses included. Um, a lot of that comes from all our years in assistive technology, as you can imagine. Um, some of the people who ha have the most challenging uh, eyes to track are people with severe physical disabilities, and that's a huge part of you know, the audience that we have started serving. So that will translate very well into future mass market products. Hmm. Nice. Uh, and then a question that's uh, near and dear to my heart. Um, uh, like I said before at the top of the, at the, top of the talk, um, I'm with uh, Verizon 5G Labs, and we're exploring all the different ways that 5G can be used um, in a variety of use cases, both uh, commercial as well as consumer. And so it, it, seems, it seems like um, the, there's a lot of um, benefits that come with uh, the type of technology that, that is um, foveated tracking. And I'm curious, um, with the, as companies and organizations that would adopt this technology, as they begin also adopting things like 5G and edge computing, um, how will foveated uh, technology evolve, and um, will will the capabilities of 5G with Edge um, reduce the need for for foveated uh, foveated tracking, or, or how do you see that playing out? So I think in in 5G um, and anything that has to do with transferring data, we're always going to have limitations of bandwidth, and even though the technical technical capabilities might expand with 5G. To be honest, some of that we want to have returned to, to the ecosystem as lower implementation costs of a network. So we're always going to do that balance on how much bandwidth do we allow and how many users can we get there. So being able to compress data smartly with foveated transport um, where eye tracking is going to be completely needed is always going to be a challenge. So I say, I think the applications will just in increase um, all the GPU manufacturers, all the operators, all the network manufacturers are looking a lot at this. 
And so it's a super exciting area over the next few years. I put a, a couple of links in the chat higher up, maybe 20 minutes ago, um, with some links for those who want to go into looking at foveation and how that actually works as well. That's great. Thank you for doing that. Um, uh, I think that's the most of the, the questions that we had in the, in the chat. Uh, how else can people get a hold of you and also from Doug, who I uh, apologize, we, uh, uh, we didn't get too much Q&A for. Um, but how, how can uh, any of the audience, how can they um, follow up with you or, or, um, or continue to ask questions of, of you and Doug? Drop, drop us an email is probably the easiest. Uh, we have some information in the chat. Um, obviously, the regular website, toby.com, is a great place. But email is always good. So I'll post both of our emails into the chat here after the session. That sounds great. Cool. Well, thank you, Johan. Uh, that was very inspiring. And uh, between those two talks, I feel like I'm uh, on the way to being an expert at phobia and transport. <laughs> awesome, and even more so, look, all looking forward to Eugene's presentation with Alma Lens because they had some really, really cool um, applications coming Absolutely. out. Absolutely. All right. Great. Cool. Thanks Thank so you, Alma.